Please don't be tired of Psalm 16, verse 5 to 6. That is a scripture for the year. We're going to be looking at that scripture again this morning. Psalm 16, verse 6 to 5. five verse 5 to 6. Hallelujah. We started this program five days ago. God has been faithful. How many of us are ready to possess every possession God has in store for us? You are loaded already. You are ready. Everybody say, I'm ready. I'm ready. Yes, I'm ready. I'm set. Psalm 16, verse 5 to 6 is our anchor scripture for this year. Oh Lord, you are the portion of my inheritance and my cup. You maintain my lot. Verse 6, the lines have fallen. Not that it will fall. It has already fallen. The lines are falling to me in pleasant places. Yes, I have a good inheritance. Somebody say, I have a good inheritance. I said in the first service, before chapter, verse 6 can come to pass, verse 5 must come to pass. What is in verse 6? The lines are falling onto me in pleasant, the lines have fallen onto me in pleasant places. Yes, I have a good inheritance. Somebody say, I have a good inheritance. Say it like you mean it. I have a good inheritance. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you have a good inheritance. Why? Because in verse 5, you have made the Lord your portion. Except if you, he said, God is my portion. So, in verse 6, the lies now are falling to me in what? Let me tell you why you don't have any choice this year. You have to make God your portion. God is the only center that can hold things together. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. He said he held all things together by the word of his power. The world, the globe, the heart is spherical. But it's hanging in the space. Who is holding it? God. All the planets are hanging in space. And he's holding them. So the Bible says he held everything together by the word of his power. If you want everything to be properly held together in your life this year, you better make God the center of your life. Make him your portion. This is not a year to play games with God. This is one serious year for everyone hearing the sound of my voice to make God your portion. Everybody say God is my portion. Let me explain again because of those who are coming for the first time. In Israel, there are 12 tribes in Israel. One of the tribes is called Levites. This tribe, they are the one that serve in the temple. They are the one who become priests and sons of prophets, you know, who serve in the temple. They were dividing inheritance in Israel, and God gave instruction, give other tribes their own inheritance. He said, but for this Levite, don't give them anything. I am their portion. Can you imagine? If it's some of us, we're going to fight too. You give everybody land, property, car, material blessings. You now say you are my portion. No, I want my portion. But God was simply giving them the biggest of it all. Because Psalms 24 verse 1, the heart is the Lord and the fullness thereof. So if God is my portion, everything is my portion. He said, don't you know that all things are now yours? This is the year to allow God to stay at the center of your life. Don't play game this year. Sincerely from your heart. Let God be your portion. I would say God is my portion. I met him when I was about 16 years old. And I don't know, something just came on me that I just began to love him. I've always been a Christian from a Christian family. My mother is an evangelist. They've always preached to us. We've always come out in crusade, Rehabonki crusade, Baba Badari's crusade. I don't know whether you are like me. They will be making altar call. My mother will say, yeah, go forward. I see she's able to make this decision for me. And you have to go. If you don't go, you won't eat that day. That's my mother for you. If you don't go, you have to go. We went out, we came out the other time. She said, yeah, I didn't see the sign. I didn't, I didn't see the sign. I'm the one you are living with. I didn't see the sign. Go and give your life to God properly. So, people that are coming to do crusade where we live, we have their sleep. You know, decision sleep. Different decisions. 
But there was a day. Nobody said, I should give my life to Christ. Too. My mother was not even there. A young man preached, and I felt convinced in my heart that it's time. If you are here this morning or you're watching online, this is the year. This is the year to, give, to make God your everything. This is the year. Don't mix it to make him your what? Absolutely. Absolutely. Something came on me that day and I said, no, I think this is it. And those who followed me up, thank God for them, they taught me this from the very beginning. And my father and my mother were surprised. That, what happened to this boy? God is my portion. If you go to all my social media platform, it's there. God is everything to me. That is, has been my foundation from the beginning. He is everything. He's my all in all. When you choose God, you choose everything. That's a smart choice. That was a smart choice. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Seek ye first his what? And his righteousness. And all these things that people are dying for, that they are fighting over, shall be added unto you. Make God, let him stand at the center. He's the only center that can hold things properly. Are you following me? Are you following me? Don't deceive yourself. Oh. Do it from your heart. Oh. Let it show in all your decisions. Oh, that God is your portion. I would say God is my portion. One translation says, I choose God only. I choose God first and only. When, you, when God is your portion, you will choose him. Abby? When God is your portion, you will choose him. It's my choice. If they put silver and gold on one side and put God on one side, I will choose God. That's what you are saying. No? It will show your priority, how you set your priority. It will show in how you what? Set your priority. It will show in the things that you want. Even when God says, what do you want? It will show in what you want. When God appeared to Solomon and said, what do you want? He said, give me wisdom that I may be able to judge this your people. And God said, ah, ah. Houses are there. You didn't ask for. Money there. You didn't ask for. Dollars, pounds, time. You didn't ask for. Long life. You didn't ask for. The neck of your, even your enemy, you didn't ask for. And you're asking for what is not personally your own. Just you can judge my people. He said, I'll give you houses. I'll give you riches. I'll give you... That was the smart choice Solomon made. Because Solomon loved the Lord. Ask your neighbor, do you love the Lord? Ask your neighbor, you can say, do you love the Lord? See, because loving the Lord shows in the choice you make. Loving the Lord shows in the choice you make. If God is your choice, if God is your portion, you will love the Lord. Because if you don't love the Lord, you can't even make God your choice. This is once one year, don't come to church because of silver and gold. Oh. Choose God. Choose God. And see what God will do. Choose God. Choose God. Try God. Try God. Try God. I'm a living testimony. I'm a living testimony. When I made the choice 25 years ago, I had family member who said, you want to suffer? Because it was obvious that we're going to go through a few things. You want to suffer? I said, it's, it's not suffering. It is not suffering to do what God asks you to do. Are you following me? Thank God for my mother. The day I told her, she said, <laughs> in her bedroom. I thought she would be shocked and say, ah, you just graduated, your father just died, we need money in this house. She said, <laughs> and I nailed her immediately. She said, oh, why you need buy <laughs> that prayer. She said many other prayers, but that one I've never forgotten. And placed her hand on my head and prayed for me. Because she was shocked. Is that your choice? I'm not saying you should come to full time, but I'm saying choose God this year. Be a priest and a king this year. Stop running after silver and gold. They will run after you if you run after God. I'm serious. 
Follow God. Goodness and mercy are, will be commanded to follow you. Follow God. With all your heart. Sincerely from your heart. Not playing games. Don't seek God for testimony. Seek God because you love him. Testimonies will follow you. Are you following me? I cannot tell you our weekly budget as a church in Agege, you will think it's crazy. We don't talk, say things like that again. So we don't want to be in trouble. Crazy. Crazy. In our office and the church premises, we have, we have uh, seven or eight, about seven security men. We have cleaners. All together with our instrumentalists and our, we have almost 25 staffs. Crazy. You should know, crazy. I prophesy. As many businessmen and women, career men and women, students that will choose God this year, you won't struggle. Amen. You won't struggle. He said, tell the priest, don't give the priest inheritance. I am their portion. I don't want them to be fighting over land with you. They are more than you. They are not on your class. That's what he said. And he said, you are priest too. Don't let them, I don't want the priest to be staying with, uh, this is my side. Your line has entered my line. He said, no, I don't want them with that kind of life. I don't want them to struggle with things. I want them to just be my own and I'll be their own. Read through scriptures, not one priest went hungry. Not one priest. All the Levites, he paid their bills. This year, God will pay your bills. You will never struggle to pay anything that is called bill in your family this year in the name of Jesus. Before a need arises this year, supply will be waiting. Flamboyant supply will be waiting in the name of Jesus. When I said God sent me to Agege, I have a couple of friends that pitied me. They felt, ah, because all my friends were in there in Kenya or VI and no services. In fact, one of my friends, you see, let me let you see. Some of us are living in Agege, don't know how they see us. So. When we brought Dr. Miles Moro about seven or eight years ago, one prominent friend of mine, you all know him, I don't want to mention his name. Miles Moro left his church to come and preach in our church. So that my friend could not call me, he now called another friend of ours and said, ah, I heard that my small is coming to Pastor, uh, to Reality Christian Center. That my friend, Rev Kodede, said yes. He said, will they understand his English? <laughs> That's how they say it. He said, will they, he said will, they, will they understand? Why did they invite the man who speak English? Oh? He didn't know that we know English more than them. He didn't know. If we don't know English more than them, why did we lead Waek? Where were they when we led Waek? Where were they when we led Waek? What was their scores? Are you following what I'm saying? People will look down on you because you choose God. But the Bible says because you choose him, he will make everything at your command. Somebody is here. You have made up your mind that you see that God or nothing. In 2023, everything you need will be supplied. Amen. Everything called need in your life will be supplied. Amen. Let me say, God is my portion. Please, the choice to make this year is God. God, I will say, God. I was studying the. He said, when you choose God above gold. In 2023, see how he will bring you your villa, your place of gold to you. That is when you choose God above gold, God will now bring gold, a villa, a place of gold. He will bring it to you. But when you choose gold, that is the rat race never finish. It never finish. Don't join them in the gragita. It doesn't finish. You choose God. Make God the first, make him the last. Make sure every day before you leave your house this year, you call on him. 
Make sure you acknowledge him in all your ways. Make sure you give him his place in all your decisions. You'll be shocked how God will surprise you. Those contracts that people are lobbying for, they will be calling you. They will keep it until you have arrived. You are not sending me properly. Others will think you are using charm. That it is not possible for you not to be using something. How come is only her? How come is only him? Choose God. Choose God. Choose God. I remember one day, Bishop Abbey was telling me, he said, today, if you don't have anybody to believe, what about my testimony? You know me. Because I lived in the same room with him when I was in primary two and primary three. He was living with an uncle of ours and I was living in that, with that uncle. So it was like my father, because my father was not around. I was sleeping at the bunk, you know, I have, I have Moti Jaron Pati Morelu on Lori several times. I fell down on him several times and he hit me. I said, wake up. <laughs> He said, if you don't believe anybody, what about my own testimony? And actually, I saw his testimony. I saw when his trouser was not touching the ground. And he would carry balls it up, running up, up and down. I followed him to fellowship before, and I'll be feeling like, what is this man's problem? Let's go home. I saw how he finished school, was looking for a job, Became a farmer. Farming did not work. Now got a good job. A lecturing job. Everybody was excited. They later heard he has dropped the job. He has faced Kaduda. And his father said, I will never forget that statement. Is that what he will be using to feed himself? When you make God your portion, humans will despise you. Because they won't understand. Because you'll be coming to church. You'll say you are going to church too much. You'll be giving, they'll say you are giving too much. You'll be attending to things that pertain to the kingdom, they'll say no, because they won't understand. But when the result will come, they will join you. Are you following me? Because this year the result will come. The harvest has come. The compensation is here. All that you have been, there's all that you have been, after, look, friends will call you this year and follow you to church. They will say, we've been watching you for years. It's like your secret is this God, 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 God you are mentioning. Take us to that place. That will be your testimony. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, let God be our portion. And let it be in reality, indeed, and in truth. Indeed and what? In truth. As a young man, I made a decision in my life. I said, until we have built you a house... I won't build any house. I won't do anything like that. You see, when you make God your choice, you look like you are stupid. <laughs> Amen. You look like you are stupid. But ladies and gentlemen, I've enjoyed privileges in my life. I've sat in places in my life and I've been wondering, what else can bring me here if not God? When the building project was to start, God told me, he said, I will bless people here because of that project. I told him, please, add me to that list. I want to be one of them. And God began to open some doors for me. I will soon share my testimony with you. That I, I, I marvel at his... Look, the moment you make the right choice, and God checks your heart, and see that your heart is right, forget it. He's not a man that he should lie. To. Just make sure you are sincere. Don't play games. Because if you are playing games, you will know. Man sees from the outside. God sees from the inside. Make sure you are total, you are absolute. Hallelujah. One of our dickness many years ago, many years ago, got a job in a bank. She got a job in a bank. And she promised God she was going to give God her first salary. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. But that time they were going to pay her salary, they told her they were going to give her half. I can't remember the details, but they said it's half they are giving her. You know, you know there is a way we play God. Please come and share, come and help me because I can't remember very well. Mrs. Dickness Akin Jogunla. Please clap for her. I'm trying to remember because 
the owner of the story is here, so there's no point stressing myself. It's a long time. So bank did something that should have used, you know, there's a way we corner God. You are calculating your tithe. You're not behaving like you don't know mathematics again. Where is my mic? Where is that mic? Now, something happened that will have made that to say, at least God will, you know, we have this way we, we just corner God. Our sincerity was very inspiring. Please, sorry that I disturb you. What exactly happened? Hallelujah. Amen. So I got a job um, miraculously. I remember that uh, one of those days when I was still trusting God, I was doing a, a freelance marketing job. So I went to Papa with my certificate. I don't know if you can remember. Okay. I came with my husband okay. on a Wednesday. You prayed for me. I think it wasn't too long after then. Wow. I got the job. Wow. I just got married. I was pregnant. You know, a lot of things. But I thank God for the organization I work with. Zig. It's one of the best organizations you can work with yeah. in Nigeria and internationally. So um, I got into the training school. Long story. They saw that I was pregnant. They said, okay, get in if you do well, no problems. Then I got in. I gave birth, like, when I had three more papers to write in the training school. Wow. So I was at the hospital. Three days after, I told them I was coming to write my remaining papers. Wow. So I went, finished all the They papers. allow you to go and give back and come back. I finished all my papers. I went for the graduation and everything. So um, the person that was in charge in HR said, don't worry. We'll give you a soft landing. You'll get posted to HR. You can close earlier to go and be with your baby. And they were going to give me half salary. That was the policy at that time. Half salary because I hadn't spent six months. Okay, I was before not you are confirmed, confirmed, you have to take yes, half and salary. and I was going to go on maternity leave. So that was the case. So I just took it that. It was fine. I was people looking for a job. And it was a good one for me. So I, I thought God I was going to give my first fruit. So I gave it, actually. I gave it. Even though I had needs then, I gave the first fruit. So I just got called one of those days from Lucky. She was like, ah. He was like, ah, please, oh, there's something happening. You know. The policy has just changed. You. you are going to get the half of the salary for the next three months. I think I had, it was already December. It resumed wow. in October. Wow. So I just got paid half for each of the months, for the wow. three months that I hadn't been paid. And I think it was that time the policy changed. So if you enter... <laughs> From training school, if you are pregnant, you have to go on math. If you get your full pay. Full salary. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, do you know there is a way you can corner God and say, God, you know that, number one, I'm pregnant and I have baby to feed. I cannot give my first fruit. You know, you know and it looks logical. It looks sensible. But despite that, she dropped it. 